Okie dokie. So you have these three files that you've downloaded. The first thing you want to do is install Xcorts. It's a typical GMG file. Uh, go ahead and run it, install it, open Xcorts, close Xcorts. You want to make sure that you then either log out or restart your computer before you do the next step. So Xcorts first. Do not mess around. Second, once you log out, log back in, or restart your computer, you're going to install Inkscape. That will also, uh, it'll pop up, well, let me show you what it looks like, because this one's an easy one. You just drag this over here and drop it in. I've already done that, so I don't need to do it again. So that's pretty basic. You have Xquartz installed. You have Inkscape installed. Uh, let's open Inkscape and make sure it's working. One of the easiest ways to do that is take this SVG file that I have attached for you uh, and open that. The best way to do that, not necessarily just clicking on it, do make sure you open with Inkscape. Otherwise, it might open in Adobe Illustrator. So that's a control click or a right click, open with Inkscape. You'll see Inkscape pop up in the corner, then Xquartz, and this will open this file. This is currently a uh, living hinge file. These are the, the ones I've created earlier. So it's something that'll really easily open up. You can make sure everything's working. Yay. All right. Then what we're going to do, we're actually going to quit. Believe it or not, we're going to quit out. Yes, I want to quit out. Everybody's happy. Okay, so now you see Inkscape is not active. Xquartz is not active. Everybody's happy. Now, we have this living hinge extension zip file. Open that up. You have this folder. This folder needs to go in a very specific place. This is partly why we have the screencast. You need to go into your finder to go back to your applications and find Inkscape again. Right? You've done this. Not a problem. This time, you're going to right click or control click on it and show package contents. This is all of the stuff embedded in one of those all you see is the icon, uh, essentially the whole program. So you're going to go contents, resources, scroll down to share. This is where we go all the way across here because this is a lot of stuff. Contents, resources, share, Inkscape, extensions. Is that enough subfolders for you? Okay. So in extensions, you're going to take this Inkscape Living Hinge Master folder and you're going to kerplunk it in this extensions folder. Okay, I've already done that. I'm not going to do it twice. Put it here. Then you can close that window and then go back to Inkscape. Right? And if you want to go back in by opening this guy, do this. Just as easy. Thinking, thinking. There we go. OK. Uh, now, all of your commands are going to be here, not up in this area. This is your export stuff. Don't play with that. Um, we're going to do File, New. And you can see this has a very old school interface. It's all right. Um, if you want to change your document properties to something that is the same size as, so I did File, Drop Down, Document Properties, um, custom size. You can either go to the A2 right in landscape which will give you the roughly the size of the bed or if you want to do it in inches not millimeters you can do 24 inches and uh, 18 inches and that'll give you again very close to these dimensions uh, for the laser bed piece of wood piece of acrylic whatever we're using uh, so then we go over here oops we can close that and this is your command minus command plus. We'll zoom you in and out. This is your piece of wood, so not a piece of paper size, but big size. And this is where you're going to be able to work with your extensions. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to do is create rectangles and squares, because generally, and I would suggest whatever you're going to curve, do it this way. Uh, you've made your box, but we don't need a black box, right? We need to be able to control the fill and the stroke. This little paintbrush and the little box up here, click on that, gives you this palette. We want no fill. We want stroke, that is a, a color of some kind, 
uh, black is fine, but we're not going to see it yet because we need to have a stroke style and we need to bring this up to about a millimeter or so, so that when we click off the box, we can still see the box. Later, we will need to be changing that to 0 0.001 or 0 0.003 uh, millimeters, points, whatever, um, so that it will cut. But right now, we're good. So let's say we then wanted to be able to bend this in the middle. Uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit, or a lot. Oop, lost my, there we go. Um, you can pull your guides over, you can find your middle, snap to, all that fun stuff. Um, once you create these, you can move them around. You want to make sure that your box is at or just over your edge. If it is inside the edge and this part does not get cut, then your uh, wood won't bend. It has to go all the way to the edge. So that's a, a thing to be aware of, right? There we go. And you want to make sure that it really is all the way to the edge because we have a, a one millimeter thickness of our line here. So you can see how that goes just outside. That's a better bet. Now, I'm like, okay, well, we have this square inside of which we want to put a living hinge. Extension, render, render, living hinge. Look at that. Okay, so it gives us some dimensions to work with. Uh, we don't have too many examples cut yet. So depending on what you want and how much you want it to bend and how fragile you want it to be and how thick your wood is, you have some different issues to deal with. This is the default. Um, this can be longer. This can be... Uh, as big or as small as you need it to be. I'm going to try that. Uh, we can see the live preview or not, depending. Um, so here's the interesting thing. We can go back and change some of these. This is pretty bendy, uh, at least in a two millimeter uh, thickness of wood. Um, the When this gets made, it, it the lines are vertical. Right, so uh, on your, and this is what this explains, right? The cuts run in the Y direction, so up and down on your flat surface. The, if you need your object to fold in the other way, like this one, I want this to be able to bend in the middle so that it flops around, makes like a book cover. Great. Um, if I wanted it to bend the long way, and I'm going end to end, I would need to have these running the other direction. Right, so I would need to reorient my big box vertically on my page as opposed to uh, horizontally. So think about that, about which direction this is going to go and which direction that means it bends. This, this side will bend towards this side. This side does not bend towards this side. Right? Hopefully you can understand with these cuts how that works. So we're going to apply that. Then we can close it. Um, and you can see how that's going to bend that way. Now, good news, you can move these things around. You can, uh, like, you can take this out of the box. You can put it somewhere else. You can, using these tools, it's really easy to flip-flop it this way. If you have the box the right size, it doesn't make just the lines change. It, like, rotates the whole thing. Um, so that's an option. Um, you don't need this box anymore, necessarily, because you don't want it to cut it out from the other section. Um, depending on where center is for this. You can kind of figure that out. You can move your guides around. So you kind of see what's going on. So this would allow this to bend. This would be solid. This would be solid, like a long skinny notebook cover, whatever. So that's the essentials for this living hinge. And it's a lot of trial and error. I would say, please, if you are making, and in fact, let me back up two steps. The, um, it's not command, it's control Z, FYI. Uh, put this back in here. Um, so let's say I was going to move both of these things. No, I'll move that, I'll move this, great. So both of these things. Um, because perhaps I wanted to uh, make an example, I can pull this box down a little bit. Then I could go in here and I could say, okay, so for the text on this, let 
which we would have to pick a color at some point. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We'll see how it goes. Um, I made mine 35 by square for my text. Thank you. 35 millimeters uh, was the first distance. Four millimeters was the second one, and two millimeters was the third one. So you can see how that would work for my live binder or live uh, live hinge, right? Um, so that we have that this um, aspect here is, and we would need that to go that way, so that it would fit. And there. Oops, maybe this way. Okay, so what am I doing? It wasn't, my box wasn't a real box. It wasn't a square. So when I rotated it earlier, it kind of got all over the place. And if it doesn't cut all the way to the edge, again, it won't work. So I want to put that in there so that it, this will bend this, this way, like around in a curve this way, so that I can have these sizes on this wood and what that looks like as uh, an example. So you could make a bunch of these things and cut them all out and then leave them with me as examples of how this works, right? So that would be not a bad thing. In fact, so copy paste, stick this thing over here, same size. Then I could go back to my extensions. I could go to my render, living hinge, over here. All right, and maybe I wanted to try one that was only 20 cut length with a gap of three and a separation distance of 1.5, okay? So we can see how these things affect our choices. And you can see that's going that way. So I would need to uh, sort of reorient my box and make that work. Um, yeah, pretty much. Do you see how this is going to fold the right way with this as a solid part? And this isn't, this whole thing would fold the opposite way. So if I were going to do that, I would need to then choose, yes, yes, close. Um, choose here. Don't, okay. Don't pull on your hinge. <laughs> Don't pull on your hinge. You can pull on a box and give yourself a little extra space so we could do it this way. Um, because then you're you're changing the size and the relationship between all those strokes, This is, which is what we're trying to document, right? So this one cuts this way, and then we would put these numbers, te the text, on the side this way, so rotating it. On this one I did, what did we do? Did we do 20? And three millimeters and 1.5 millimeters. Okay. So your text is currently there. We want to rotate that this way and slide that into place over here. So you could do these no matter which way your binder, your uh, hinge direction comes up. You want to make sure that it's parallel to the solid part of the wood that you're leaving. And uh, that's kind of key. Um, now, in general, if we are cutting demo pieces, we want to cut all the way around it because we want that to come off in one piece. And we want this solid part attached to that hinge part. Uh, similarly, up here, if we're putting a hinge on it, we want the hinge to go into place. Uh, let me rotate that. Um, we want the hinge to be in place, but we don't want a box around it because if you cut a box around this, it's going to cut it off from the solid pieces, which defeats the purpose of having this long piece uh, with bend in the middle, right? So think about what you need and what it's going to take to get there uh, as you're designing your piece. Really pay attention to which direction it's going to bend, the fact that you have to cut off all the way to the edge in order to get that wood to, to bend. Um, and then when we bring it into uh, Illustrator, either on, on your computer and or when we bring it over to the Windows machine for the laser cutter, we then have to take any of the um, strokes that we're dealing with, right? 
that's our box, so no fill. Our stroke over here needs to have a stroke style or a stroke width of a 0 .001. Now here's the tricky bit, is once you apply that, I hit return, it looks like it disappears, right? Because it's 0 .001 is super, super, super skinny. Even when we zoom in, you're like, well, where did it go? You're not gonna see it in Inkscape. It doesn't resolve that well. You will see the hint of a line in Illustrator if you do it there. So depending on your level of, uh, well, more or less paranoia of being able to see it or not, right, there's my box, um, you may want to leave this up a little bit um, so you can see it until you bring it into Illustrator. Uh, yeah, that would be recommended. center that a little bit better. Whoa. All right. So, uh, that, 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 that. there we go. There's our thing. There's a couple of examples. Fabulous. Um, I think that's enough to make you all dangerous and uh, starting this process. Um, think about what you want to curve. If you want, for example, let's say you wanted this to curve all the way around and attach to itself, you need to have a way to do that, whether there are two solid pieces at the ends that you're going to overlap and glue together, that's one option, but it does leave a, um, a, that overlap. Or if you want them to come together and you perhaps want these to fit together, maybe there's a way to go in and uh, add, add a node here. And again, you would probably do this in Illustrator, so you could add a couple of anchor points and you could make this part go in and this part come out and then it would fit together when you wrap it around. So think about your joining techniques and how that's going to work. Um, glue is always an option. It's not always the best option. And sometimes glue and a tab or a slot is better. So bearing that in mind, let's see what we can do with these fun living hinges. Yay.